Whoa, hey everybody. In this video, I'm gonna explain data classes in Python and how to use them. A data class, it's a special kind of class. It's designed mostly for holding data without writing a lot of the boilerplate code for regular classes. With a data class, you have these special methods such as dunderinit, dunderwrapper, and dundereq automatically generated for you. You don't even need to explicitly write them. In this demonstration, I have a normal class a class of person. And you can see we have a lot of boilerplate code. We have dunder init, which assigns a few attributes, such as name, age, is alive, dunder repr, which returns a string representation of an object, and dunder eq, where you can compare if two objects are equal or not. If I print person1 and person2, it's going to automatically call the dunder repr method, which returns a string representation of these objects. And dunder eq is used to determine if two objects are equal. Person1 and person2, their attributes are different. That returns false. But if these were the same, well, then they return true. This all is a lot of boilerplate code that we have to write for a class. All it seems is that our class is just holding data. Another option, instead of using a normal class, is to use a data class. We'll write the same code, but use a data class instead. Here's how. We will create a class of person. Then to make this a data class, we have to add a decorator at data class. And you will probably need to import this from data classes, import data class. Now, instead of defining a constructor dunder in it, we don't need to do that. That method is provided for us. All we need to do is list the attributes and their data type. So name colon space, that is a string. We had age, age colon space, that was an int. We also had an attribute of is alive. I'm going to set that to be a Boolean. And if you would like, you can set default values too. I will set this to be true. To set a default value after the data type, follow it with equals and then some value. All right, we should be able to create some person objects. Let's create person1 equals call the constructor for our person class. We'll pass in a name such as SpongeBob and an age 30. And then I should be able to print person1 and get the details for person1. There we go. Person1 is a person object. Name SpongeBob, age 30, is alive. That equals true. Let's create person2. I'll do some copying and pasting. Person2 equals a person. Their name is Patrick. Their age will be 35. Print person2. And here's Patrick. Patrick is a person. Name is Patrick. Age 35. Patrick is alive. That's true. When you print an object, that will automatically call the dunder repr method. We don't need to explicitly write that. Our data class will provide that for us behind the scenes, as well as dunder equals. I will print is person1 equal to person2. That's going to return false. But if they had the same attributes, SpongeBob age 30, well then that returns true. And we don't need to explicitly write this method of dunder eq. Now here's a few tricks you can do with data classes too. Within a data class, after constructing an object, the data class can automatically call a dunder post init method, but we'll need to define it. Define dunder post init, and then we have an argument of self. Here you can write some logic for any verification. So after calling the constructor, let's check to see if age is greater than or equal to zero. It works kind of like a setter. If self dot age is less than zero, then we will raise a value error with the following message. Age cannot be negative. Let me change this back to Patrick. Patrick was 35. All right, let's try and construct a person object with the name of SpongeBob. Their age will be negative one. And we get a value error. Age cannot be negative. You could add a dunder post init method. It adds verification when you try and assign attributes. 
Let's change SpongeBob's age back to 30. Now, if you want your object to be immutable, meaning that you can't change any of the attributes after you construct an object, you could add the following after the decorator. A keyword argument of frozen equals true. This makes any object created from the static class immutable. Let's try and change SpongeBob's age. Person one dot age equals negative one. And you can see we have a warning already. Person object attribute age is read only. We can't change it. And you can see that we have a frozen instance error. To make objects created from a data class immutable, after the decorator, you can add a keyword argument of frozen equals true. Another trick with data classes is that when you print one of these objects created from a data class, you can hide attributes too. Here's how. Let's add a new attribute of password. Password colon space, our password will be a string. We're going to set this equal to, then we will call a function of field, then pass in a keyword argument of wrapper equals false. Now you do need to import this name. Import field from data classes. So make sure you have this import. What this field function does, it's a special helper function. It's used inside of data classes. It's used to customize how individual attributes behave. By setting wrapper equal to false, we're saying that when we display our object, this attribute is going to be hidden. So now we need to pass in a password when we construct a person object. For SpongeBob's password, let's say it's pineapple1. Then Patrick's password, um, let's say it's also password. Patrick isn't concerned about security. All right, now let's print person1 and person2. And the password should be hidden. We only have these three attributes. Name, age, is alive. All right, everybody, so those are data classes in Python. They're a special kind of class that's designed mostly for holding data without writing a lot of the boilerplate code for regular classes. They automatically generate dunder init, dunder wrapper, and dunder eq, so you don't need to explicitly type them. And well, everybody, those are data classes in Python.